shocked, aren't they? <laughs> well, to my left, to your right, is my next guest, um, uh, Bob Weiner. He is the national Democratic strategist and former White House and Congressional Senior Staff member. Uh, he was a public affairs director and spokesman in the Clinton White House for six and a half years. Earlier was uh, communications director for the House Government Operations Committee under uh, John Conyers, Democrat of Michigan, who I know very well. The House Narcotics Committee under uh, Charlie Rangel, Democrat of uh, New York, who I know and Chief of Staff of the House Aging Committee under Representative Claude Pepper, who I never had uh, the opportunity to meet, and uh, Legislative Assistant to then Representative and later uh, Mayor of New York, Ed Koch, who I do know. <laughs> so uh, earlier uh, you directed the press briefing room at the Democratic National Convention in Denver? Actually, m actually most recently, that was this summer. That was this summer. Yeah, we right. were there as well, right. yeah. and uh, you did a great job. We Thank were you. Actually, the Democrats did uh, a better job than I thought than the Republicans in getting us information to, Good. to get on the air. Um, not that they didn't try, but you guys were much better with information coming at us uh, constantly. And as you know, in this day of instant uh, news coverage, we needed that kind of stuff. Welcome to, uh, to News a, Talk Online on PalTalk.com. It's a real pleasure, uh, Gary. And boy, you know everybody. I'm very nah, impressed. Nah, I just had opportunity over yeah. my uh, career to, to meet a few guys. And but let me just tell you something on what you just said. The fact of the Democratic information flow versus the Republicans hiding 15 million emails, that's typical of what the problem has been in this entire administration of secret meetings, secret emails, mm -hmm. secret policies, and you wind up with torture and wars and, and intelligence that take you places that you miss the target and don't get the terrorists. And then you wind up giving tax breaks to the rich because you've had secret energy meetings uh, that, that represent the special interests. So what we saw today from Barack Obama, what a night and day difference of a, in a tale of two speeches. Mm -hmm. George Bush's farewell when it, where it was 9-11, 9-11, 9-11, good and evil, and cut taxes, and Barack Obama's where it's people, and people judge you on what you build, not what you destroy, and hope, uh, and, and actually doing something for the workers and the lower and the middle classes of this country. This was a real celebration on the mall of people who need help and who are excited. You had, I, 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 I guess I'd say today that you had um, two million cold feet and warm hearts all celebrating change. <laughs> well, let me just say, though, we do know that this president has raised the bar. Now he, there are expectations way, way up there, Bob. Is he actually going to be able to meet those expectations? Well, I have it in my briefcase. The uh, American Association of Retired Persons Bulletin, the most red newspaper in the world says, day one, national security uh, and the financial crisis. No, it's not going to happen on day one. It's going to take days, weeks, and months. But and, this, years. And, and years. And years. And absolutely. And Obama has said it could take it, is, it, a couple of years. Um, and the American people, by poll, just showed that they are willing to give Barack I Obama a couple of years. I just want to say, interrupt you just for a second, that CNN is now confirming that uh, uh, Senator uh, Ted Kennedy did collapse uh, uh, during uh, the inaugural luncheon, uh, which you know, I you know, I, I commented earlier, Bob, about yeah. how uh, frail Dick Cheney looked in the, in his uh, wheelchair. Or how uh, uh, President uh, Bush the first, uh, I saw him walking with a cane, uh, looking his age. Uh, yeah. uh, and I, I meant to mention in in that context that yeah. Ted Kennedy looked great today, and now yeah. comes word that he collapsed during the inaugural luncheon. Obviously. Um, putting uh, a pall a little bit on today's uh, celebration. Well, I um, launched my political teeth in Massachusetts where I dropped out of UMass grad school and worked for Teddy and was his, one of his youth coordinators and uh, knew all of the Kennedy people. And then I worked in his presidential campaign in 1980 as well. Uh, and it, I stood with the Massachusetts delegation in the convention. Uh, the congressional delegation had me join them uh, as Kennedy gave his speech on the convention floor. And I'm very grateful and honored that I had that opportunity because Ted Kennedy is one of the real, real champions uh, of valor in, in of politics. He has gotten so much done. He tried this health care issue long before it's now become more of a reality. He, mm -hmm. he has been trying to get national health insurance through the years, many other causes. Uh, this is 
uh, going to be a sad day if something happens to Ted Kennedy. Well, we know that he's been uh, e extremely ill, and right. uh, he made a, a, a wonderful recovery, and um, it probably doesn't come totally unexpectedly yeah. that he's still struggling here. Um, and so we. The reality uh, is the odds are slim on brain cancer. The reality and, is that the odds so, are very slim. And so uh, we wish him the best. But uh, we're all realistic, and who created this 80 and out system anyway that we all have to live with, you know? It's just the way it is. Yeah, I guess that's uh, how life goes. By the way, yeah. speaking of the Kennedys, uh, what do you feel about the fact that uh, Caroline Kennedy potentially might become the uh, U.S. <laughs> senator from, from uh, New York State? <laughs> Patterson is so funny every time he answers the question. The last time he answered it, he said, you know, a lot of people are trying to push me, but it's not just famous names. There are a lot of great people out there with, with, that are far less known. So he's giving hints that he could go either way. And that's fair. That's yeah. a fair position to take. Yeah. Don't you agree? Of that course it is. she's untested, there are a lot of uh, good Democrats who are in Congress right now. I'm going to be honest with your listeners. Mm -hmm. I've watched her speak at the Kennedy Center Honors. Mm -hmm. She wasn't good. She was boring, she was nasal, she was monotone, and I'm saying, why is she the front runner for this Senate position when you have an expert? And I love the Kennedys. Teddy is, is a blood brother of my political career. Kathleen Townsend, is, I just spoke to her yesterday, and I love her, and I hope she becomes the next drug czar, for example. Right. But, uh, but I was not impressed with Caroline, and I know this is talk radio, and this is where we get some fiery opinions, right? I oh, didn't yeah. think she was any good. Now, maybe Patterson will appoint her in this and that, and maybe she's done some things in her phil philanthropic work. But the Cuomos and the Nita Lowys and all of that in New York, they got a lot of credentials. So I don't know that you have to go with Caroline Kennedy. Yeah, well, maybe people uh, think of her as a continuation of the Kennedy name, but it's well, maybe Well, maybe today it will become more important to do that. I don't know if that's a reason or not. But, you know, so I think you got to go with merit and quality. And Patterson indicated – in his jokes to Larry King and others over the last 24 hours when he said he's going to appoint within two or three days, and now it's probably two days, uh, as soon as Hillary gets confirmed, although they just pushed her off a day, some Republican, I guess it's... Uh, She's uh, getting the, confirmed. There's no Of course, no but it's for tomorrow it. instead of today, it looks like, because some Republican decided he wants to play politics and blame Bill Clinton as to why he shouldn't appoint Hillary. You know, So... Uh, it's, How does uh, this work here in Washington? I'm in New York, and I, I cannot believe that Ted Kennedy collapsed like uh, 10, min 10 minutes ago. And we heard about it here before CNN, uh, you know, who's presumably there at the, at the, uh, at the luncheon, um, you know, had it on the air. How did it uh, travel from, <laughs> from, from the luncheon to where we are today? I think CNN wanted to be very delicate in a matter like that, and they, they wanted to... I uh, agree. They so they, they confirm it before you, say, yeah. before you say it, but how did it get to us like, like yeah. that? I mean, it's just amazing how Washington well, works. Well, let no me tell you something. Now. The American people knew about the Iraq war and where we were fighting, what we were doing before George Bush did, mm. and the reason was because CNN was showing it live. That's actually the new American intelligence mm. is... The network cable television and your show yeah. <laughs> is the electronic media. Right. I'm sure. And That's true. it's a myth. I don't think it's a myth anymore because people know it's not true to think that our intelligence people, which are just people and screw up and play politics, are smarter than the media. You get sometimes better. Charlie Rangel, who I worked for for five years, said to me, he doesn't want to know about something uh, that's classified because then you can't talk about it. 